Hey there guys, Portalmaster9351 here, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about the upcoming Skylanders Battlecast. Now, the reason I want to talk about this now is because the free game, I'm not sure if the cards have been released yet, but at least the game has been fully released in New Zealand and possibly certain other small countries as well. Um, you cannot currently get in America. Basically, if you live in New Zealand and you're keyed into the New Zealand portion of the app store, you can get the app. Now, I want to talk about prices of the cards, but first I want to actually compare, uh, well, you know what, let's start with card prices. So, um, right now we know of two types of uh, Skylanders Battlecast packs. Uh, these are not the ones that came in the starter pack. Uh, there were some images discovered of people having in hand. Um, you know what? The cards must be out in New Zealand if that if they had cards in hand. Um, they probably it's probably out in New Zealand. At least the cards are. Uh, anyways, anyways, sorry, getting off topic. Um, there was a pack of eight Skylander cards, and what can converted to, I believe, it was $5.25. Now, I want to just quickly compare that. A pack of eight for $5.25 is what Battlecast is. Magic the Gathering, which is probably the world's most popular trading card game, physically at least, uh, currently charges $4 for a 15 card pack. Now, granted, this is in a uh, just a simple, a simple little pack, and occasionally they have cardboard on them, and the Skylanders booster pack actually looked like it was packaged in cardboard, but still, 4 for 15, or 8 for 5.25. Let's move on. Hearthstone, which is, albeit, a virtual card game, charges 150 for a pack of 5 cards, so take that. So that's 30 cents per card. Magic Gathering is about 27, I believe, cents per card. It may be 23. I can't remember. Calculated this up beforehand, but I'm not entirely sure. Pokemon. I've got some Pokemon cards here. These are like vintage Pokemon cards. Some of these are actually worth pretty good money. Um, they come in booster packs of 10, and they, are, they cost $10. So that's also a 30 cent card, or 30 cents per card. And then we have uh, Yu-Gi-Oh, which I honestly couldn't find a conclusive answer as to how many cards come in there. Uh, but in general, it's cheaper than Battlecast is. So Battlecast is the most expensive card game out there. So it's going to be kind of difficult to purchase big things like this with cards, with eight cards costing $5.25. There is a silver lining, however. Battlecast cards in New Zealand may cost more than they do in America. And that's just due to economical reasons that I won't go into, but they will probably be cheaper in America. The main concern I have is that it won't go below $5. $5 is probably what they're going to stick with. And if that's what they stick with, I may not buy any because to me, $5 for 8 cards isn't worth it when I don't have any friends that play Battlecast, but I've got friends that play Magic the Gathering. So, you know, it's it, maybe that's just me, because not everyone is... Because this is a much more complicated game than uh, Skylanders Battlecast is. Um, and so is Hearthstone. Now, and other games like that, Pokemon is probably its closest competitor, at least in terms of the general audience. And I haven't played Pokemon in years, but still have some vintage cards. See this Chansey? I think it's worth like 15 or something like that. I looked it up one time. Um, the other thing I want to talk about is um, expansions um, to the card set. So, for any of you that play Hearthstone, for example, or... Magic Gathering, or Pokemon, really any card game, there are expansions. And the way each card game handles expansions is going to vary by card game. For example, Hearthstone, all card expansions to ever exist are usable. They're perfectly usable. Um, I'm not sure about Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh, um, but I do know with Magic, the Gathering, right here, the way it works is there's different formats in tournaments. There's like ones where you can only use cards from the past two years. There's ones where you can use 
all the cards printed since 2005, all the cards printed ever. There's a ton of different varieties of ways that they handle expansions. Now, the thing is, when every expansion comes out, it changes sort of the types of decks that are being played. And one thing I'm curious to find out is, when Battlecast is released, how will expansions be handled? Will we see regular expansions? Because, for example, Magic the Gathering does like three a year. Pokemon, I'm not sure how often they do it. Hearthstone does like three a year, too. And it's that, and you know, Skylanders, is, is it going to have expansions is a big question that is on my mind right now. And if, if it does have expansions, the way they handle how the cards work is going to be very important because... Um, Cards, when when you discontinue a, an old set of cards, that set can usually go up in value. So there is a lot of collector's value in buying these cards. It's just going to depend on what they do with these cards in the future that's going to change the future value of those cards. So right now there's a lot of questions that we don't know about, that we have unanswered about Battlecast. And... Um, it's supposed to come out relatively soon. That sort of bothers me a bit. Um, the fact is, it's probably going to be out by late January or early February. So, if we don't get some details soon, that's going to be a little troublesome. Shouldn't impact sales, but still, it's a little, little annoying. Um, the one other thing I want to talk about is certain things that I've noticed in playing both Magic and Hearthstone. And the reason I'm using those two as my example instead of Pokemon, which is probably Battlecast's closest competitor, is because I have more at more recent experiences with Magic and um, Hearthstone. So, something interesting about if you look at the two games compared to each other is that Hearthstone does things that can't be done with the physical game. For example, they recently introduced a new mechanic called Discover. When you play a card with Discover, it presents you with three options, which are just random cards that you may not even own in your collection. And you get to pick out of one of the three cards to add one of them to your hand. Now, with Magic the Gathering, you can't exactly just come up with three cards that you may or may not have and add one to your hand. That's not exactly possible. Um, and it does some other crazy things that can't exactly be done with physical games that I won't necessarily go into. What, whereas, um, you know, Magic tries to stick to things that can easily be comprehended. You know, sometimes there are some complex mechanics in Magic the Gathering, but for the most part, you wouldn't... There's no computer needed to play Magic, as opposed to Hearthstone. Now, Magic is available on uh, mobile and um, Steam, I'm pretty sure it's available on Steam, and it's available on mobile devices in the form of Magic Duels. And something interesting is that it plays exactly the same as it does on paper. It's no computerization. So something that's going to be interesting to see about Skylanders is how it handles this. Could you, theoretically, take your Skylander cards and actually play with them in the real world? Or would you need a computer? I mean, I've seen some gameplay, and obviously you're going to need a computer to play some of the elements of it. But are there going to be? Is it going to be handled as if it has no boundaries? That's something I like about Hearthstone. It handles itself as it has no boundaries. You can do anything because there's a computer present. Will Skylanders Battlecast do the same? That's yet to be seen. Um, so pretty much, this is just a video talking about how much, how little we know about Battlecast. And I do hope you enjoyed, and I hope that you kind of thought that some of my stuff was um, insightful talking about uh, Skylanders versus all of its competitors. And I almost did forget, I want to talk about one other thing, and that is card quality. So I'm going to pull these two Battlecast cards out of here, um, out of this booster pack. And I'm going to open my magic thing. Got some of these for Christmas. Um, let me just pull out a new card. Er, hold on. So, here's a magic card. Here's a Pokemon card. And then, here's a Skylander card. 
Now, initially, you can obviously tell that there are some major animation differences. So, this is obviously very um, cartoony in a newer sense. It's a newer cartoon-styled artwork. Um, whereas this, I know this is an older set, so it's obviously going to look a bit different. But, um, in general, they do stick to this anime style, whereas Skylanders has a more Americanized version. So, you know, there's some difference just in card design there. And then, um, I'll compare them to a Magic card. Um, you can see right here, um, I'm trying to pick one of the less scary Magic cards, because some of them can be rather disturbing to look at. Um... But, obviously, this is a much more realistic style of artwork than this is. Not that that's a good or bad thing. It's just a different style of art. Um, now, I just want to compare the cards. This is very flimsy when you compare it to a Pokemon card. That's the sound a Pokemon card makes. This is the sound of... This is much thinner cardboard. And then a Magic card is about the same as a Pokemon card. So, uh, the Skylander cards are a little less durable, and that does worry me slightly, especially since it is geared towards younger kids. You know, it seems like you'd want to make them more durable it's just to stand up to little kids, but maybe that's just me. Anyways, like I said, hope you thought that this discussion about the comparison between uh, Skylanders major competitors was helpful, or Skylanders Battlecast major competitors um, and when it gets here, I will do some insightful review and sort of reference this video and say, well, how well did it wind up doing in terms of, you know, its competitors? So, just wanted to put this out there. Thanks for watching, everybody. Remember to like, comment, subscribe. This has been Portal Master 9351 and I'll see you next time, everybody. Goodbye!